Now, most people know what an aquarium is, but have you ever heard about a terrarium? Well, that is what we're talking about on the show this morning. We have Denny Moe in studio, and he's responsible for these beautiful creations. And he's also going to give us a couple of hints and tips on how you could possibly make your own terrarium at home. Denny, very nice to have you in studio. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us. These guys are breathtakingly beautiful. It's like <laughs> something you. out of like some mystery, magical world. What exactly is a terrarium, and how do they work? Well, you guys know what an aquarium is, right? Aquarium, yes. They it's have fish and water and all of that. Same thing, but of the land. Okay. So it's terrarium, terrain, terrarium. All right. And that's where they come from. So it's a land-based version of a terrarium. So you're taking life of a forest instead of an ocean into a glass. That is absolutely beautiful. Now, the designs here are strikingly beautiful as well. What goes into the actual design? Let's forget about the garden for a second. <laughs> um, it's a geometric shape. So it's taken from all geometrical shapes. That's a dodecahedron, do and these are triangles, and they look, that looks like a crystal. Anything that's got a flat edge, I take. Yeah. And why I use these flat edges is that I can actually make like ventilations out of them. Like some of these here yeah. have ventilation for air to flow through. And I start with you know, start simple drawings, yeah. and then eventually I move it on to 3D, and then I work with a glass maker to like solder them together. The plants inside. Now, this is really what catches the eye as well. Let's start on here. What are some of the kind of plants that you can put in a terrarium? It, look, you can do almost any type of plant you want. You can start with, I think the most basic, if anyone here was starting to make their own one, I would use a desert theme. So you pick like um, a succulent, and you pick some nice rocks and rock art, and you landscape it, you know, picture okay. it from like, get a picture graph of, a, of what a desert would look like, yeah. and you can plant them inside them. Okay. And I look, these ones are more tropical, which is actually a lot harder to maintain, so more mm. of an expert level. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so play around with the idea first before you go into this, okay? Yeah, exactly. So like the bonsai ones are actually quite easy to maintain. They just need a lot of space, so you need yeah. a huge glass for it. Um, moss, reason I chose moss is a miniature version of grass. Okay. So that hints the moss, and it actually keeps the moisture in, so it keeps the soil quite wet. So that's how you actually, that's how these things, they can't dry out. The minute okay. they dry out, that's when most people's bonsais actually die. Yeah. And if you want to play with a smaller plant, you can pick orchids. So these are the smaller orchids, and these are the more exotic orchids. These require a lot of maintenance. Okay. And like that one too. Yeah, all right. So let's let's forget it. We'll leave these guys to you. Now, yeah. if, if somebody would like to make their own terrarium at home, can they do that? Um, because, I mean, you've got the expert help, the 3D design uh, yeah. program. How would people at home go about it? Look, you don't really need, like, I would obviously recommend my own glass. That's just <laughs> nice and pretty. But you don't <laughs> actually have to. Just any kind of jar with some kind of opening would work. So you need a jar. You need some pebbles. Okay. I'm going to talk through <clears throat> this per layer, okay? Right. So we've got at the bottom layer, I think from over here you'd probably see there's like yeah. nice rocks underneath it. The pebbles must sit at the bottom layer. There must be a mm. thin layer of it because it keeps the water from actually eroding. Okay. Because once it sits in soil, it starts to stink and it smells like a That's swamp it. after a while. And, and after that, you get a layer of like activated charcoal. Like, guys, not any charcoal. Please don't take your bright <laughs> charcoal. <laughs> It doesn't work, it's going to smell like a barbecue. <laughs> Activated charcoal you get at most fish shops, most aquarium shops. They, the function of those is actually they actually suck up all the dirt. It has a, it has a natural uh, uh, ingredient that actually sucks up anything that goes past it, so it's filtration. Yeah. And then you put in soil, or try to pick some organic soil, um, make sure it's quite kind of healthy, and then moss over it and your plant. Okay, well that's it. So if you follow those basic steps, you'll be okay. Mm. And when it comes to the maintaining phase of the terrarium, once you've done all the research, you've built it, you've created it, how do you maintain it? Is it quite difficult? It's, look, it is quite tricky. It's not something that you could leave there and expect it to live, yeah. to be honest. You have to put it in the right place. First of all, sunlight. Where are you going to put it? So next to yeah. your window where there's bright sunlight. Look, bonsais need direct sunlight for at least two to three hours. So if you've got, like, you have to just yeah. actually just work out exactly where the sun's coming from and how long it's going to be there. Orchids, no direct sun. Uh, these things need to be away from the sun, but they need to be in bright light. That's how they like them to be. And then thereafter, it's the temperature. They like yeah. to be in warm, like, warm places. I mean, this one specifically, these are more complicated. They have, there's a hygrometer in here. So the temperature should be between 20 to about 35 degrees, and mm. the humidity should be about 60 to 80 percent. All right. And same with the orchids. They're even more picky, these ones. Sure. Denny, yeah. this is very, very interesting. Thank you so much for joining us this morning and showing off your beautiful creations. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Well, there you go. If you fancy yourself a bit of a, a gardener with a green thumb, this could just be a nice challenge to undertake throughout 2015. Try it out. We'll also put all of those details on maybe how-to on our website, expressoshow.com. Go check it out.